of all drugs, it looks like the least. I don't appealing. understand it at all. Well, I, let me let me defend because I used to smoke weed for two years straight. I'm gonna tell you what it did for me. When you smoke weed, it depends how you use it. You can use it as a tool. It, you can find motivation in it. You can find yourself. How can in it it. Motivate? I'm gonna explain to you. It's spiritual. You can use it as a spiritual tool, spiritual guidance. When you smoke weed and you're in your thoughts and you're thinking, you can find the best <clears> yourself. <throat> you can you can you can find who you truly are. I agree. Do you know what the There's ultimate baseline spirituality ideas that come is, to me. What? Survival. I'll tell you a spiritual experience. Go have a fight with your security right here. Get the living <laughs> kicked out of you. And try your very, very best to actually survive. That will teach you more about yourself, about grit, about determination, about who you truly are, about your spirituality, than any stupid plan. The reality of spirituality is a man is survival in the face of uncertain odds. You want to be, you want to find out about spirituality, walk into an MMA gym. You want to see what you're really made of, go fight in the UFC. That will teach you about spirituality much more than some drug. That's yes. Okay. Um, if Andrew Tate, if you would personally meet Andrew Tate, right, talk mm -hmm. to him and stuff like that, and he would tell you, George, you need to stop smoking. We would you do that? I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question with a little story. All right, before I answer my question, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the story. And you've heard the story before. I just want I just want the audience to know about the story. Okay, there was this time at my point when I was serving. I was waiting tables. Uh, I wasn't even a server. I was an assistant server. And I was trying to become a server. I was trying so hard to become a server. I hated the job. I hated the position. I just wanted the status. I just wanted to be a server. I wanted to get paid more. And I thought that I had put in enough work. I had been there for six months. And all I wanted them to do was to, I just asked them, hey, can you just train me? I'll come on my off day. Can you just, can you just show me the ropes? Or can I at least prove myself in some kind of way or form? And they said, no, wait. And I waited. And I waited and they kept saying no to the point where I got frustrated and I ended up looking for another job and I found that other job. And I had this amazing interview with this man who worked in the number one restaurant in all of New York City. And I didn't even know that at the time, but I sat down with him and he hired me. I didn't accept the job because he wasn't giving me the server position that I asked for. He told me, if you want to take one step forward, you need to take three steps back. And I was a little stubborn when I heard that. And I was like, mm, I like the guy. I respect him a lot, but I just, I, I need this position. I need to be a server. So he ended up, he, I ended up working for him because he ended up coming to my restaurant and, and basically looking, looking me up and to see, Hey, does he really work as hard as he says he does during the interview? I had a lot of respect for that. So I ended up working, working for him. I ended up working for him and he wanted me to come work for him full time. And I told him, I'm like, yo, like I have this other job. He literally stopped me like, and was like, yo, he's like, honestly, like, I know you have this part-time job. But how are they treating you? They treat you like shit. They don't give a fuck about you. What are you doing here? Like, how, how are they adding any value to your life? You've come here, worked through this restaurant, and you've literally leveled up three times, a hundred times over more than you ever will in that position. Why are you telling me you're not going to work this shift over that other shift? This provides you more value today. I want you to go home and quit your job right now because I'm going to bring you more money. When he told me that, I shit you not, I didn't argue. I didn't say nothing. I didn't like the way he was talking to me. Uh, in my head, I was like, who the fuck is this guy talking to me? He's my dad. What a little fucking asshole. And I really just sucked it in. I shut my mouth and I did what I was told. I quit my job and I made way more money. I became head bartender of that restaurant. So if Andrew Tate told me, hey, weed is not doing anything for you. Quit smoking weed and you will make more money than you could ever imagine. You bet your ass I would fucking quit smoking weed. So what it takes for you to quit <laughs> for Andrew Tate to say it? No, like I just said, it, ha it has to be in a way where like he convinces me that, yo, like I've done more for you than anybody, than weed will ever do for you. That's in your what life. I'm saying. So the only way you can do smoke, quit smoking weed if Andrew Tate says that? Not if Andrew Tate says it. I, I guess if he you're, you're missing the you. purpose of the story. If he can win the purpose you. of the story is that somebody would have to come into my life and provide enough value, right? And show me and prove to me that they're worth respecting. And I will listen to them. I will listen to them because, like I said, men humble ourselves. We must, if we want to succeed, we must humble ourselves more than a woman ever would. All right, we will okay. do that. We will do that. Okay. So, so you okay. know, that was my long way of answering that question. Okay, let's keep watching. God, you really hated that story. No, I did not hate this story. I saw you looking at the comments and I was like, we're not reading that. That's a cop out. That's bullshit. I agree. It's a shortcut. It's a short. No, it's not even a shortcut. It's a cop out. There's a reason all these fucking. There's a reason all these people go and go. I want to do ayahuasca go to learn about myself. I want to see what I'm really made of. Well, see what you're really made of. Go become something. Oh, I don't want to do that. That's hard. You know. So then, what the fuck? I know what you're made of. Do you know? I know what you're made of already. You're a bitch. Do you know what the Native Americans used to do? 
they used to make this stuff, this stuff called, I think it was um, wok, right? Not, not like lean. They used to make this drink, and you would drink it, and you'd hallucinate. And they said that they would find themselves from that. Yeah, how, but they, all, they also used to like train and ride right horses and exter- It's like DMT? Yeah. Each other and engage in battle. That's the thing about, like, you know, Andrew, Joe Rogan talks about DMT. So many people, you know, you're talking about, like, weed gives you creativity. Weed's never given me creativity. Weed just helps me calm down a little bit. Like, that. that's really all it does. It just, like, it just, like, makes me dumber. Like, I need to be dumb, and it's almost like a weight on my brain so that I could work harder. It's almost like doing curl-ups. Like, that's what weed helps me does. Because when I'm off weed, I'm fucking on, bro. I'm just hella fucking focused. So... That's the way I see weed. Now, when we're talking about spirituality and actually learning a lesson, I think one of our greatest lessons came from doing what? From dehydration. Dehydration, hiking on a mountain. When we knew going up this mountain, we had very little water. And we experienced like, yo, we have to share this amongst each other, bro. We can't get greedy with it. We have to finish the hike. We were, we were planning on quitting, giving up, getting irritated at each other. We were mad as fuck at each other during the hike. We didn't even speak to each other halfway through the hike. And we made it to the top. We shut the fuck up. And we looked at how far we have come. And we knew we had to go back down and it was going to be dark. But we did it anyways. We got there with no water and we went down with no water. And then at the end of the day, when we were driving home, dehydrated as hell. Lips all chopped out. Fucking (laughs) being annoyed. We enjoyed it every single drop of water i don't care what anybody can say creativity or spirituality we went to the grocery we bought like five bottles yeah but we <laughs> like enjoyed we the crap out of that water able to drink it. we did and that was spiritual for us that was true spiritual enlightenment for us all right fuck any dmt anything all of that shit that nothing will give you that same amount of like revelation or enlightenment in life than truly having those kinds of experiences so you know you need to make sacrifices in order to uh like grow battles and wars and a bunch of other shit i'm telling you if they did nothing but stream and take that shit they wouldn't have found anything i agree thank you i agree with that part i think you the easiest way to find yourself <laughs> is to become the ultimate version of yourself yeah are you the best aiden you could possibly be hell no okay so there you go so you know what you need to do i know what i need to do